Hello, Rock of Roseville family. It's so great to see you online. I actually wish I could see you, but I'm imagining you sitting in your pajamas and uh, hanging out with your family. I'm so grateful that we live in this time where technology gives us access that we can be together even if we're not together because the Spirit of God can transcend any barrier that the world tries to put up. So I pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that right now you are open and ready to receive the fullness of all God has for you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and take over. Your word has life, God. Your word gives us hope. Your word is our roadmap to destiny. And right now, God, would you send your holy angels into the homes of those who are watching and, and communing with you, Jesus? And would you begin to move our hearts, stir our hearts for the new thing that you're doing in this day and in this age, God, that we are all part of your grand design and your grand story to bring your gospel and the presence of your spirit to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would love for you to know what the Lord is talking to me about because I believe so many of you are going to go, uh huh, I heard him say that. Uh huh, I saw that highlighted in the word. The word in this year is for us to trust and declare. I believe we are called into a time of purity in our mouths because we are still in the Hebraic calendar of the Hebrew symbol pay, P-E-Y, which means mouth. And I believe that the Lord is saying to us until the end of this season, which is September 6th at sunset 2021, that's the end of pay, that we are to watch what we say and to speak according to the word of God. And I believe we're gonna be seeing a manifestation of a Joel 2.28 time. Joel 2.28 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I have never seen such a time already as this. People on our Agape Freedom Fighters team are having dreams and then the things are actually happening some days or weeks later. I've never seen this type of dream increasing where people are getting revelation after revelation because they are choosing in their time of being maybe isolated and not being able to go to, go to work. They're working at home. Everybody's at home. In their time of what the world says is isolation, they're actually seeking the Father's heart and in their intimate connection with God, they're getting revelation from Him. So at this moment in time, there's never been a more important era, I believe, at least in my lifetime, where we have a harvest on our door and we've got to get ready for what's next. So in the weeks of being home, you know, there's been a lot of messages from a lot of people for the Lord is inviting us to come and encounter Him in all these new ways. But I heard the Holy Spirit tell me in, in this last year so many times, I've dispatched new angels, pay attention. And, and the names of these angels are always something to do with war. That shocked me because this started in the middle of COVID. The Lord started speaking to me and the names of these angels had, had always a, a name that meant warrior, warlike, victorious in war, famous in war. And as I began to press into the Lord, I thought, well, that's so weird. What are we doing? And the Lord said, I'm preparing you. I said, well, I, I, I'd really, not really thinking that we're in a war, but then the, the longer COVID went on, the more I saw the media slant, the more I saw the things happening in America, I realized, oh, you were warning me ahead of time, but you've sent us angelic helpers. You've given us the Holy Spirit indwelt with us. We are perfectly formed and fitted and ready for war, but we've got to put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. We got to carry the shield of faith, hold up the sword and walk walk in the sandals of peace. But as we walk, I heard this thing. Holy Spirit impressed on my heart. Discernment is wisdom's best friend. That's who you have to walk with. And you know, most of you, if you've, if you've been walking with the Lord for any time, you know Proverbs 3, you know all of the different ways of wisdom. Wisdom is a spirit of the Lord. And though it costs us all we have, we are to get wisdom. But discernment is wisdom's best friend, says the Holy Spirit, in preparation 
to join the angelic forces in the war and the battle we're in. So let me explain some things I, I hope will help you because it helped me. Wisdom is the supernatural knowledge and the ability to understand what is true, what is right, and what is lasting. It's God's divine nature and part of the gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 8. So wisdom often manifests through the prophetic, but it also manifests in preaching and teaching. Wisdom is a character trait of the Holy Spirit, but it's given to the sons and daughters of God to distinguish the wise from the unwise and to bring revelation to what is truly supernatural from what is man-made. It is most importantly part of God's divine power within us as spoken through the words of the apostle Peter. If you'll open your Bible to 2 Peter 1, verses three through four. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. We've been given everything we need and discernment and wisdom are part of that holy divine power of God. So we've been given this discernment and it's connected to wisdom, but it differs in this way. Discernment is the ability to perceive what God's desire is in a specific situation, to see it uncovered, to see it laid bare, to see it and know the true supernatural nature or the natural nature of a thing, to discern what is good and what is evil is different from wisdom. It's to comprehend what is obscure. Are any of you feeling like things are constantly being obscured by the media or by medicine or by whatever it is that we are not getting the full truth about? We need discernment right now. And the word of God is constantly this, this light, this roadmap, and it's always under the tutorial direction of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 4 verses 12 and 13 says, for the word of God, the word of God is actually alive. It's living, it's active. You know this passage is sharper than any two-edged sword and it's piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Wow, do you ever like have those days where you're thinking, man, I'm so far from God and then you get in the word of God and it just slices right through all the garbage that you're believing. It pierces us to the core because we are the supernatural being, the co-heir with Jesus. And the world, though it slimes us, we can get in the word and find the truth. Verse 13 of Corinthians 4 says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight. Nobody is hidden from God, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Everything's laid bare before the Lord. The Lord is the discerning one. So if we are one spirit with him, then we have that ability. It has to be practiced. And Jesus said in Matthew 13, 11, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. Whoa. Discernment is to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And, and it's not, uh, it, may, it may not feel necessary to you to have discernment just to advance the gospel, just to evangelize. But, but I would submit to you that if we wanna grow up in him, we wanna mature in the, in the word, we gotta have discernment as an embodied characteristic. We got to hold it as a value and we got to press into the Holy Spirit so that we continually have greater revelation and understanding of God's word. Then the secrets of the kingdom start to be unveiled to us. I don't ever want to grow up, you know? <laughs> I'm the oldest 59-year-old person in the body, but in my heart, I'm still 20. I just, I don't want to grow up, but in the word, I want to grow up because when I grow up and you grow up, we become obedient to God's will in every situation. Ultimately, beloved of God, discernment and wisdom allow us to become greater reflections of Christ's glory 
as written in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 16 and 17. Here's why. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. There's no veil. Discernment and wisdom are part of the removing of that veil because the earth, the world, every worldly, every demonic influence is always trying to put a veil over our eyes again. So these verses speak of the veil of religiousness, unrighteous judgment that comes upon the minds and the hearts of those who have not turned to the Lord with a completely open heart and a deep understanding. It's really easy in this day to take offense. It's super easy to go, that person, that person, those people, that people group. It's super easy because that's a spirit of division, chaos, and defilement that is all over our country. But we must be the people with open hearts and deep understanding because that is the manifestation of wisdom and discernment. So only the spirit of God can give revelation and lift the veil and the clouds and our perception, but we gotta be with him. The deep things of God are known by the Holy Spirit. So we have to continually be on a passionate pursuit, living empowered by him. I want you to look with me again in in the book of Hebrews. In chapter five, verses 13 and 14, it's talking about growing up again. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. Been there. But solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. We have to continually practice, and we may not get it right every day, but as we're practicing, it grows within us, and maturity looks like developing discernment. So I have four main things to share with you that discernment gives us to release in this world, to be the manifestation of Christ. I I would uh, urge you to take some notes for your own study. So the first thing that discernment gives us, it allows us to have a proper understanding and a heightened level of critical thinking according to the plans and purposes of God. We won't be swayed this way, swayed that way by all the emotionalism we see in our current culture. Discernment allows us to develop greater critical thinking skills according to the plans of God. So here's the the great uh, example for us. Solomon asked for an understanding mind to govern the people and to be able to discern good from evil in 1 Kings 3, 9. And the Lord answers him in 1 Kings 3, 12. He says this, behold, I've done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. The Lord gave to Solomon wisdom and discernment. And then Paul scoops this up and prays this for all believers in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. So turn to Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And Paul's words are for us today, for all believers. He says, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So the love of God that continually fills us and flows out of us brings us real knowledge and all discernment. Number two, discernment helps us to see the primary from the secondary and the best from the good. It actually prevents us from being deceived. Wow, I could use that today, how about you? It it prevents us from being deceived by every worldly spirit and every good intention the world has. It is given to us as protection. It's a sixth sense that needs to be developed or fully matured. Let's look at Psalm 119, verse 66. It says, teach me good discernment and knowledge for I believe your commandments. I believe in your law, God. 
We are not under the law for condemnation, but we live according to the law because that's order. The world is living to its, according to its chaos, and we are not subject to that. Knowledge or wisdom with no discernment leaves us with no ability to apply the knowledge as God directs. We become subject to the wind blowing this way and that way. We are praying, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done. But if we don't have any discernment to understand what God desires us to pray and release on earth right now, we will always go back to the old thing. So we have to hear prophetically and through the word of God, what is the Holy Spirit saying right now? Otherwise, we will fall into praying according to our human perspective and our human orientation. Number three, discernment is the ability to assess the spiritual status and motivations of individuals, groups, and even movements. Hello. I have to tell you, I was, uh, I was actually on a horse in Wyoming in the summer, and uh, I was so caught up with the news before I left. And I don't normally watch the news, but all this chaos was erupting and I lived next door to a police officer who was guarding the Capitol at that time. And there was all this stuff going on and the BLM movement was happening. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is not what it appears to be. I said, well, of course all lives matter, Lord. And he said, it's not what it appears to be. So I actually looked up the front page at that time in the summer of, of Black Lives Matter and uh, it, it said to reorient, basically, the, to, to remake the nuclear family. And I, I just had a check in my spirit, like, what does that have to do with, uh, with what, the, what the agenda is that's being painted? So anyway, I was praying about all of that. Um, and I was so caught up in that in my mind when I was on horseback and I was in the, in the Grand Teton National Park with a bunch of, of people where we were meeting there about uh, bringing music, music festivals all over the world that will actually rival Burning Man. Hello, God's doing a new thing. So I'm on this horse and I lean forward and on the, on the horse's neck is BLM. And then I was like, why, did, why is that a tattoo on this horse's neck? So I get back to the cowboys and I said, wow, BLM, you guys really care about that, that movement. And he looks at me and he goes, yes, ma'am. And I said, well, that's just fascinating that you got, tattoo you got these horses tattooed like that so quickly. And he said, ma'am? And I, I, we just were not, we was like this, you know? So I just, I said, and it looks like he's, this looks like Hebrew on his neck. <laughs> so this is my world lens. He has this writing below BLM, and I'm like, this is just fascinating. And I get off of the horse, and I look at the cowboy, and I go, well, what does this, this looks like Hebrew, what does this stand for? He said, uh, ma'am, it's, it's, the, it's the Bureau of Land Management. <laughs> it's the tattoo that all Mustangs get. And I, was, I just burst out laughing, and I thought, oh, God, give me discernment. Give me some wisdom. I'm all up in this other thing, and, and I'm just supposed to be on a horse in the moment enjoying it. So how important it is to match yourself with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Because discernment, which I so didn't have in that moment, cuts through what is false and realigns us to what is biblically accurate and true according to what Jesus says. Jesus cares about BLM. He cares about the people who are being deceived. He cares about equality for all mankind. I do too. But in that moment, I was just not even present. I was someplace else. Do you know that Jesus didn't even entrust himself to those he discerned had a malaligned heart? John 2, 24 and 25. But Jesus, on his part, was not entrusting himself to them, for he knew all men. And because he did not need anyone to testify concerning man, for he himself knew what was in a man. You know why he knew what was in a man? Because he went to the Father and he always asked, what's going on here, Lord? That needs to be us today. Daniel 2.21 is also important for this time when we're talking about developing wisdom and growing up in discernment. The word says he changes times and season. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. So you and I as believers in Christ know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only true king. Yet the word says God sets up kings and removes kings in the earth. And he's doing that even in these troubled times. He's 100% in charge, always. 
And what the enemy means for evil in this time, beloved of God, the Lord is gonna work together for good. But we have to have discernment about the changing times and the seasons ahead. So let's be aware of what kings of this earth we are allowing to speak into our lives. We need some supernatural sight. We cannot assume in these days that what we see is what we can speak with assurance about. We cannot assume on God because of our current experience. He's calling us to a deeper, deeper place with him. So today I have to choose and you have to choose who am I serving? I believe this is symbolically an Ezekiel 47 time. I believe we've been in that for over a year now where the water is rising. Yes, that's a depiction of the millennial church, but it is symbolic of those who are willing to dive deep with the Lord. We have to be anchored in the word and we have to drink deeply of this living water every day. But through this surrender of our lives, then we have greater discernment. There's always risk involved, right? People might not like us. People might think we're weird, but I will, I'll put this out there to you. The more you spend time with God, the more loving he creates you to be. We're not religious people, but when we go out and love people and the discernment of God follows, people look and think, what in the world do they have that I don't have? Because joy is a manifestation of that. And people wanna know why we're laughing in the middle of all this chaos. There's so much that we think we know that we don't know. And in Matthew 16, 13, Jesus said, in the morning, it will be stormy today for the sky is red and threatening. You, same for us, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the sign of the times. Boy, Lord, give me discernment. Give us discernment for the sign of the times. I don't want to assume any longer that I know what God is doing because he keeps on blowing me away doing something new. Let's go to that fourth thing that discernment does. This is the biggest one for my own heart. God-given discernment comes without judgmentalism. So God's discernment gives us an ability not to run around judging everybody else. So discernment matures through experiencing conflict. Oh no, nobody wants me to say that. Truth. God uses what is opposite of what we think. Discernment matures through experiencing conflict and trusting in Christ every step of the way. And then humility, with this humility and continued prayer in gratitude, by faith, we gain victory over temptation and in trials just as Jesus modeled. And when we attempt trying to do this with striving without the Holy Spirit, we end up with our natural man. We crash and burn because we become overwhelmed. Galatians, the whole of chapter five, tells us what living with the Spirit is like. And living with the Spirit means we keep up with the Spirit and the Spirit is doing new things. So the four things we covered are just the beginning of understanding the importance of discernment and wisdom for the season. But I believe the most, most important part of the gift of discernment is that it functions at a, as a key, unlocks the door of our freedom. So with discernment, we are free from the following things. We're free from fear because we can perceive what's really going on through the lenses of the supernatural influence of God. The veil is off. We're like, oh, I can see that for what it is. We are free from the opinions and the assertions of others. Read Galatians 6, 14 through 16 for that. We are free from the shackles of illness and oppression because discernment gives us the underlying root cause. We are free from the bondage of religious and political influence. Hallelujah, do we need that today? When discernment is practiced in and through God's divine love, we are given extreme grace to handle the most difficult of situations. All right, the global reactions to the effects of the protocol to prevent the spread of COVID-19 are all over the place. I know that you've experienced disruption in your family, but we're watching chaos in the government, in businesses, in church function. Everybody's drastically impacted and all manner of human interaction is interrupted as we face all this uncertainty. It looks like we're coming out of the dark, right? But even amidst this global pandemic we've been living in, there's hope rising 
because creator God Yahweh is on the throne and he is moving his bride into a unified time as we put on discernment and wisdom like armor so that we can come above the chaos. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. They are foolishness to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Here we go again. 2 Corinthians 4.4, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message. They are absent of wisdom and discernment. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So we have got to pray, beloved of God. We got to pray without ceasing for our government leaders. Pray for the release of wisdom and revelation for the church, for our ministry leaders, for our families and our coworkers. And pray that we would all be led as Solomon prayed. In 1 Kings 3, 9, an understanding mind to govern people and to be able to discern good and evil. We must also pray in the same way as Proverbs 2, 1 through 5 instructs. My child, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Wow. The closer, the more intimate we are with the spirit of the living God, there is an ongoing promise for greater revelation, discernment, and wisdom. John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority for whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Don't we need to know what's coming? Because second Timothy three, seven says they're always learning, but they never discover the revelation knowledge of truth. And that's because they were attempting to search without the companion and the guidance and the teaching from the Holy Spirit. So Paul in that particular passage of 2 Timothy 3, 7 is speaking of powerless Christianity. He's speaking about a people who have unrepentant, immoral, and arrogant hearts because gaining knowledge without revelation is powerless. And then it leaves us with an unsteady mind. But God says in 1 Corinthians 13, 10, he's revealed everything through the Spirit. And it says the Spirit searches everything including the depths of God. As we conclude this whole promise of God that we can grow and actually grow up, discernment comes as an anointing from this intimacy because it's about spiritual discipline and spiritual growth. The Lord anoints each of us with greater measure through this just intimate fellowship, just being with him. So when the Lord gave me this message, just flushed it out in my own heart, he also spoke to me and said that my understanding of his love for me was rudimentary. I don't use that word. So I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Maybe this is for you. I feel compelled to share it with you because I was completely taken aback. I said, what? And then I looked it up. Rudimentary is imperfectly developed, immature. <laughs> yep. Or basic. Okay. I got these words rudimentary and discernment within a few days of each other. So I was really listening. And, and I kept on pressing in. And the Lord said, in stillness, you'll hear. And I thought, wow, the first thing the enemy tries to do for me is just get me all stirred up and running around and not still. But I'll submit to you, when we stop trying to figure out when we can go back to normal, we will hear an invitation from the Lord to come up higher. We're not going back. We're not going back to the way things were. He promises when we draw near to him, he's gonna draw near to us. And in that, we'll find out his love is constant. It's steady, it's overflowing, it's measureless, it's everlasting, and it drives out fear. Perfect love moves all the fear of what's next, what's coming, what's happening with this world. So I am gonna ask you as I 
Ask the Holy Spirit to touch you, to take a deep breath and close your eyes. And Lord, I thank you that you are forever carving your name and your words in our heart, that you are transforming our mind, renewing us moment by moment to be more like you. Lord, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 3.3 3, that we are living letters written by Christ, not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not carved into stone tablets, but on tablets of tender hearts. So dearest child of God, as you are sitting in his presence right now, I pray that you will lift up your voice with me right now and say, Holy Spirit, show me what Jesus is writing on my heart right now concerning the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Sit with him for as long as it takes. Breathe deeply and rest, surrender, and watch what he shows you. Journal, reflect on these scriptures we've been going through. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that just the beginning of attempting to sit with him will lead you into the spirit of revelation and wisdom and discernment for you certainly in Christ have all you need for what's ahead. I bless you in Jesus' name, amen.